Hey guys, it's Tina. I wanted to check in. I know these glasses are a little weird. I just bought them today uh, for, for my birthday, which is tomorrow. But I wanted to do a follow-up story here about the Danielle Van Dam story that I talked about before. Uh, that video got a lot of views and I think it was due to my speech because you see you hear me say um 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 too many times like I sound I sound pretty bad but in any event <clears throat> a person has been con has been contacting me about this case and wants to uh, make a claim of innocence for David Westerfield so this story is about Danielle Van Dam and the murder of this poor little young child so the story i don't want to tell, i mean i can tell the story like advanced but i feel like it deserves more justice but then the last video you get a lot of information you just have to listen to me say um a lot but it's in my library anyway so in 2002 in february so it says february 1st or february 2nd because it happened in the night or possibly early in the morning no one knows uh danielle van damme came up missing from her home so her mother and her father her father was home and her mother had gone out that night with some of her friends they were known to be as swingers which I guess uh, sensationalized this case back in that time during the trial and all the stuff that you know happened the person that wanted me to say, you know, that David Westerfield may be innocent, um, I'm not sure. If you've seen all the evidence, it's kind of hard not to relate the two. Um, so what I've read so far, but again, I'm not, you know, sitting here saying I know everything. I'm just telling you what I've researched. And what I found is that he took off that morning that she disappeared which raised suspicion to him. And then he returned back. And then the reason why the police were on or suspect of him is because he was washing his RV out, which I guess he, he took his RV out occasionally, you know, to just take it out. So yeah, you always have to clean it when you get back, right? But what I can't get past is the DNA that was found. There was DNA that was found um, in his bed, which had Danielle's fibers, DNA, hair in his bedroom. So let me just say that I did learn that the uh, parents, uh, the, the mother, Brenda, had taken her over, Danielle, over to, to meet that man selling Girl Scout cookies once. So I don't know whether or not he bought the Girl Scout cookies, but... It doesn't make a lot of sense the way the odd part is that yeah you know when person goes into someone's house they will uh, transfer things you know traces of them but in her bed in his bed that's suspect and then the fact that he was gone and he was being interrogated by the police which on one end to me sounds a little crazy too because he sa said that he did ask for an attorney many times but anyway, the situation with finding all the fibers and all the evidence, like it's, it's almost impossible to not think, you know, I know he had like a luxury, he was an engineer, he had never been in any trouble. Uh, but then, so the police were interrogating him from what I've read and he, you know, listened and answered but he, you know, like kind of like accounted for his whole day, but he missed a part where he threw two pillowcases to a dry cleaning um, place. Is This is what I've read, okay? So in some documents and parts of the story, you'll hear parts of the story differently because what I'm reading that, that's real is that she was, you know, partially or almost you know very far gone you know what I mean advanced and so they couldn't see if SA really happened or not um if in a case like this with a child yeah that's likely the thing but the whole sensation was about the family and then the person that what I was speaking to had said something about the family doing something odd afterwards well I don't know how anyone doesn't do anything odd after you lose a child 
So I didn't see anything in the documents. I tried to bring up as much court documents that I found. If you need to, just go and do your own research about this case. It's a really sad case about a little seven-year-old girl who was just out there living her life and is abducted. So the weird part is, is when she's abducted, the freaking alarm goes off and they don't do anything about it. Then there's like flashing lights going off and they don't do anything about it. So I'm sure they're like kicking their, their own selves in the butt for their reactions. But I think they were more of partiers back then, if you know what I mean. So they went to bed without checking to see if she was in her bed, just assuming she was in her bed. This is what I've read. So this family, so this happened in San Diego County and this family may still live in this area. I don't mean any disrespect. It's just that obviously, you know, this was very sensationalized and a lot of people want to know about it. I hope you're doing well and I will see you soon in the next video. Please uh, leave me any comments below. I'm open to anything. Okay, take care. I'll see you in the next video.